We're going to be practicing using get and post methods. We've got a sample endpoint that's going to take the response object and then return back a response body back to our page and then we can use the contents there. So that's going to also be returning back any of the values that we're sending in. We've got an input field with a value. So let's try it with the get request. And when we press the button, that's on uh, the button click, we're creating a new XHR object, so an XML HTTP request object. We're getting the value from the input field and adding that value to the URL within the URI as a val equal, and then doing the send of the data to wait for the response back on load. Once we do get the response text back, we're parsing it as JSON. So that's turning it into a usable data object in JavaScript called data. And then within the arguments, we're gonna see a value for val, and then that's what we're outputting as the main content. Similarly with the post, so we're connecting to a second endpoint we're making the request to this endpoint, and this is being sent over as post. And also using the form data object, we're creating a new form data object, adding some data into it. So setting the key as val and the input value. And then once the request is complete, the load is complete, we're parsing the XHR response text value, which is a string value, we're turning it into a usable JavaScript object named data with the JSON parse method. And then we're outputting the property value of data form val into the text content. So what it's doing is it's sending it over to the server from the input field and then outputting the result back. And this is the response back from the server. We're going to be connecting to an endpoint and the endpoint that we're going to be using is the HTTP bin.org. So this is a simple HTTP request and response service. It's open and you're able to use it as you're developing and trying out code. There's a number of different websites that you can make these types of requests to. So let's go ahead and make our first request and we're going to use a get, make a get request. So we need to get the endpoint and you can get that by doing the try out. And that's going to, when you execute, it's going to give you the request endpoint. So you can also load that into the browser and that's going to return back some content. And this is using a get request. So let's add that endpoint as a URL. So we'll just call it URL one. We'll have a number of different URLs that we'll connect to. And then we'll also create a couple different buttons on the page. So we'll have a button one, so give it an ID of button one so that we can distinguish it. And then the second one will give a ID of button two. So this is gonna make a get request, and this is gonna be a post request. Also update and add an, an input field. And this can just pick up and send a value. So the type is gonna be text, and sending over a value for the text. We'll give it a name as well and I'll just call it val as the name. And then for the default value, so that we don't always have to input a value, I'll add in my name. So that gives us some values that we can work with, and then just can be just cleared out as blank. So we want to, within the JavaScript code, select the page elements. So we've got a number of buttons, so button one and button two. We're selecting them by the ID. So they do have different IDs, button one and button two. So select those from the page using the hash for button one, and then also button two. And we need to give it the hash so that it knows to make the selection using the ID. There's also the input field. So we're gonna select the input field by its name value and create an object for that. And you can just call it my input using the document and query selector. We'll select the page element and selecting an input with the property of val. And so that should give us a selection of all of the page elements. In addition, we've been able to select 
the URL as well. It looks like we threw an error. So button is not defined, so we need to define the buttons. So the first button will be the get request to the URL. We're using the HTTP request object. So create that request object. When button one gets clicked, we want to make the request to the endpoint. So set up the XHR object using the new keyword and XML HTTP request, and that should be camel cased. So it creates the request object whenever the button is clicked. So, so far we're not doing anything with it yet. Uh, so we want to make the request to the endpoint and return back the data that's contained within the endpoint. And we see that it's being retrieved back as it's uh, structured as JSON. So that means that we want to be able to make a request and use the JSON data that's sitting from the website. So on open, sending it as a get to the URL, we're sending it to URL1. So it's going to be the endpoint for get method and then initiate the request with send. So that makes the send request. And now let's uh, wait for it to load. So once it does load, we want to get the data back. So right now we'll just log it into the console once we do have data back. And that's all coming from the XHR object and contained within the response text value. So pressing get, uh, there's our content. And now if we want to use the content, we can parse it into a JSON, a usable data version. So using the JSON parse method allows us to parse a string into usable data. So we'll do that where we'll select it. And now instead of outputting the, that, we'll output the data. So this is going to be in a JavaScript data structure that we can open. And then we can see here that we've got various arguments. We've got the headers, the origin, and the URL. So the arguments that it's referring to are any arguments that are sent in to the URL. So if we want to add some arguments into a GET request, we can do that by simply updating the URL with some parameters where we add to it using the question mark. And if we say something like ID 1000 and we hit get, that's going to return back the argument of ID 1000. So this is just for this endpoint. And if on your endpoint, you do need to have a value for ID, this is one way that you can send it using the get request where you simply add it into the URL Let's select a, another URL, and this time we're going to do the post request. So hit the try out and execute. So that's going to give us the endpoint for the post. And the post is going to be a more secure way of sending data. So typically when you do have a form, you're going to want to post it instead of sending it as get request. And that's going to be the endpoint for the post method. You can also update the get URL, if you want to add to it, or you want to add some arguments to it, you could upload it directly as you're doing the open. So it's going to be doing a send and passing in that value as open. Uh, let's also select the form input value. So the my input value, I'll just give it a name of val. So my input value, and then we can send over the value of val as this value. And that will just be val. So now when we get the get, we've got arguments for val, and that's outputting the value that was within the input field. So if we want to update the main content with that value, we've got it sitting within the data. And this is an object, so arguments and val should return back whatever we currently have within the input field. And we see that we do get that updating. So now it's a matter of taking that value and assigning it to the inner, or just update it to the text content of that page element. So save it.
And now whenever we do get, it's doing a round trip to the endpoint and using the data. So let's update the button two and we'll do a post request, getting the data and sending post to the data, to the endpoint. And we're gonna use the second endpoint, so it's gonna be URL two and do a post method. And we'll just output whatever we get back as the response text within the console for now. So we do a post, get the data being retrieved back. So in order to send the data, we can use the form data object in JavaScript. So let's create that where we've got uh, form data. And this is the data that we're sending from our website. So create a new form data object. And we can populate and append content into the data. So for the form data object, append, and this is going to be expecting the data to be sent as a name and a value. So we need to have whatever the name is of the data. And that's just going to be coming from the input field. We'll use the same name of val. And then the data that we want to add is going to be coming from the input field. So from my input field value. So we're appending the data with the value. And then we want to send the form data over to the endpoint. So let's go see and let's see what we've got within the arguments. So we do have the value and that's contained within the form value. So it's not contained within the arguments as it was with get. Uh, so in this case, it's contained within the form and there we've got the value that we've added. So we can add additional fields as well. So if we had an ID and maybe we are just adding in or generating the ID, so this can be 2000 and we do a post, that's also gonna be contained within the form where we've got the ID and the value being responded back. So once we're parsing it in a usable format, then we just need to navigate to where that content is sitting. And this will vary depending on what your endpoint structure is. So in this case, it's just returning back the contents as data form value and then we can use that information and output it on the page. So it's coming from the data form value. We don't actually need the rounded brackets around that value. So now we do a post and it's updating. The get is also updating the values. And this is a simple way that you can send content over using either the get or the post methods with JavaScript.